So I've got one more announcement. It may take a little bit longer. And forgive me if I'm a little more tethered to my notes than usual. I want to make sure that uh, what we talk about is clear. Um, as you know, the elders have been looking for a second preacher to work with us for about 18 months now. And there's been much prayer for guidance and for opportunity and for wisdom. There have been many hours spent listening to sermons online, spending Zoom calls, phone calls, emails uh, with the men that we've been interested in. There's been a lot of discussion about what we're looking for in a preacher to meet the needs of the family that worships here. And on three different occasions, we thought we were close and only to have the opportunity to fall through, to fall through, you know, for one reason or another. And we want to express that through all of this, we appreciate the congregation's patience and your prayers through, through this whole process. But I do have some good news. Um, the elders are greatly encouraged to share that we believe that we have found a man who we would like to invite to work with the church here. However, before we do that, we want to hear your thoughts and impressions about this man. And I can't overexpress how important that is to us in this process to have your input as to what you, you think of the man that we are considering. And so to that end, we're inviting Dwayne Gandy and his family, or some of his family, um, to spend a couple of days with us on December 11th to the 13th. It's about two weeks from now. Dwayne's going to preach twice for us on the 13th. And we have arranged multiple opportunities for you all to spend some time with Dwayne and to get to know him uh, as well as possible. And we'll have more on that in just a minute. I'd like to share some of the things that the elders have been looking for in an evangelist. Of course, we want a man who can clearly and faithfully preach the truth of God. But even broader than that, we want someone who is serious and a responsible student of God's word. Someone who can teach God's truth not only in the classroom, but also in one-on-one -on -one studies. An evangelist who is going to help us to reach the lost, to bring ideas, to encourage us, and prepare us to do so. We want a man who will work well with the elders and have a close relationship that will help us to lead as we should, the kind of relationship that we have enjoyed with Brian and Adam. We are looking for someone who would work well with Brian and fulfill Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. We want someone who is able to form a personal relationship with this congregation, that he may encourage us and we him. Here's an idea of some of the things that we have answered for ourselves regarding Dwayne, but we're suggesting them as questions to yourselves when you meet him and when you hear him um, so that we can hear your answers as well. Does Dwayne preach God's truth? Do you think he would help the family here to grow in love and in knowledge? When you meet Dwayne and spend time with him, do you see Christ living in him? Or is there a scriptural reason why we should not invite Dwayne to work with us? See, the elders are asking you to share what you think not only of Dwayne's preaching, but as much as you can with the little time that you will have with him about Dwayne himself and his potential to help the work here at PSD. This is why we are encouraging everyone to take advantage of the opportunities that we're going to make available to spend time with Dwayne so that you can answer carefully and, and truthfully these questions. And there is something that we want to guard against in this, in this process. Any big decision like this has the potential to cause division, to draw focus away from God and to self. We have studied this and read this in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 13. And in this instance, 
beginning in verse 10, Paul says, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree, and that there be no division among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. What I mean is that each one of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Is Paul crucified for you? Are you baptized into the name of Paul? In verse 10, we see the problem, that there was division. And and us and them environment was created in the church in Corinth. In verse 10, we see Paul's appeal for the congregation to be united in mind and in judgment. And then verse 12, we see, you know, what the cause of the problem was. It was the division over preachers. In Corinth, each had aligned themselves with their favorite preacher. And out of pride and selfishness, allowed this to pit brother against brother. As a family of God, there are enough challenges to our faith and our unity that will come from outside of this church. We can ill afford to have them come from within. So how do we guard against this? Paul writes to the Philippians in chapter 2 and verses 3 through 4. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or in vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. So much of what we've been talking about in class and in the lessons that Brian and Adam brought to us today. You see, this is not about me. It's not about Herb. It's not about Terry. It's not about any one of us. Rather, it's about the family here at Palm Springs Drive serving and glorifying our God. Glorifying Him in unity. In our growth as individual Christians and as a congregation. By bringing glory to him, by reaching out to the lost, that other voices may join ours in praise to him. Glory by imitating the love of our Savior one for another. So please understand that this selection cannot be decided by a vote, where a division is created between those who get their way and those who didn't. Again, it is important to us who serve as elders to know what you think. It is not about us. It is about what is doing, what the best is to do for this congregation to lead us forward and to help us to grow and to glorify God. And from the time that we've spent with Dwayne, that's his intention as well. And we want you to be able to spend some time with him and see if you concur with that. Now, regarding this, uh, we've set up these these opportunities. Um, there'll be, we'll explain each of these in detail, but there'll be porch meetings at the Heinleys' home. Uh, there is a potluck at Eastmont. Uh, we have worship on Sunday morning, and then the deacons, the preachers, and the shepherds all meet um, that afternoon, Sunday afternoon. Uh, the porch meetings at the Heinleys, um, that's getting together outside, literally on the porch of the Heinleys, and having a chance to sit down and just talk with Dwayne and get to know him a little bit better, ask him some questions. Uh, and Shelly, his wife, yeah, Shelly will be there as well. Uh, the elders had the opportunity and their wives to have dinner with Dwayne uh, and Shelly a couple weeks ago, and then the elders went outside, and we probably spent a couple hours talking with Dwayne uh, that evening. And so we want to give, in some form, that opportunity to you as well. Uh, because of COVID and the restrictions, we're trying to keep this to a maximum of about 10 or so uh, per meeting. So we are asking people to sign up uh, for these, and I'll have a little bit more on that in just a second. But these are the times uh, that we have made available, and that's on the Saturday. Uh, Saturday night, there's going to be a potluck at Eastmont. Uh, again, because of restrictions, uh, we have a maximum of 60 people, so we're asking uncharacteristically that you sign up for a potluck as well. Um, and it'll be from 6 to 8 on, on Saturday the 12th. Sunday morning, of course, uh, Dwayne's going to preach for the Lord's Supper sermon and also for the praise uh, and preaching 
uh, sermon. And then that afternoon, the deacons, preachers, and shepherds will be meeting uh, with, with uh, Dwayne and allowing the deacons especially to get some more time with him. And this is Dwayne and his family. Uh, and I haven't met his kids. I can roughly attach one or two names, but I'm not even going to try. Um, but he has four kids. One of his, uh, one of his daughters is currently a freshman at FC. Uh, one of his sons has already graduated uh, high school and, and is pursuing his own ventures. Um, but we, we were impressed with, with Dwayne and Shelley when we got to spend some, some time with them. Now, regarding how to get your feedback to the elders, we're going to have uh, a sheet like this. Um, for anybody who wants to sign up for meeting with him on the, the porch meetings. Also, you can view this same sheet online. You can't sign up online. What we're asking you to do is to contact the elders um, at uh, elders at psd.church. And so we can get this filled out and know when we have sessions that are full and and whether or not we can say, you know, you can't do it this time, but maybe you can try, you know, a later time during the day. Um, there's also going to be in the back a schedule uh, for the events that are going on on December 12th and 13th and the opportunities that we'll have to, to get together uh, with Dwayne. And uh, one, one other thing that I'll then get to you, Herb. Um, if you are interested uh, in spending or getting to know Dwayne a little bit better, but you are uncomfortable because of COVID, of coming and meeting him face to face, please get one of the elders and we'll try to set something up. And then once Dwayne has been here on the 13th, we're going to give the congregation two weeks uh, to think about these things and to pray about these things and to share their thoughts with the elders. You can come to us individually. You can send a text, an email. You can call us. You can stop us in the foyer uh, and just, just let us know. We, we really want to find out uh, what the congregation, what this family here uh, thinks about what's going on. What we're doing is not done in a vacuum, um, and we need, we need your input. Uh, Herb, do you have something else? Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. Okay, if you know you want to participate in these things, now's the time to get your name on the list. Uh, they're in the back. Uh, thank you for your patience through all this. I know it was a lot to absorb. If you have any questions, you can, of course, come to the elders about the process or, or about Dwayne himself. Uh, but we are, we are encouraged to... Uh, to make it to this point in our process after 18 months. Is there anything else, uh, elders, that we need to communicate? If not, uh, let us close with a...